Today I'm putting together a little book for my deconstructed art journal swap pages that I've received. I've done a couple of swaps over there in Rosemary's Awesome Group. And I want to uh, bind them in here. This is a piece of weird paper that I made a while back. I can't remember um, what I made it from. There might be a piece of fabric in this one. Is this the one? No, no, no. That's the other one. I don't know what this is. Anyway, it's just layers of stuff and then some paint and junk. I don't know. Anyway, what I'm going to do is put these in here like so, so that it will do this and close like that. But I've got room to grow so that, you know, it could conceivably, the spine could get that big and be kind of freakishly huge. Doubt that I'll let it get that big, but, you know, it's, it's expandable is what I'm trying to say. What I did to start out, I laid out one of these pages. They're all the same uh, measurements, eight inches across here. So I laid it out. I drew a line. Then I measured off a half inch and I just drew another line about every half inch, thinking that I would bind them a half inch apart. But then I decided that was really too far apart because see some of them are kind of skinny. That one really doesn't need to be a half inch from this one. It can come in here. So, you know, that doesn't matter, whatever. I drew lines. Okay, so I have this line, these lines this way, a half inch apart for where I thought I might put these. And then these three lines across this way, that, well, there's more than three. These two are for the end of the, the measurements of the pages. But this is halfway between. This is the middle point. And then these two are an inch in from the edge. So these three lines are where I'm going to poke my holes. I just drew my template right onto here. Okay, so I've already sewn in the first one. I'm just using a simple three-hole pamphlet stitch. I don't have to worry about it, you know, being super perfect and everything because it's not like these weigh a lot and they're going to fall out. They're not. So I'll show you how I'm going to do this next one. I have my little template right here, mark it top. These are the three holes where I'm going to poke, right? So I'm going to go ahead and poke my holes in my page. I'll do a flip through at the end so that you can get a good look at all these pages and then maybe I will even try to remember who did them <laughs> so that I can tell you and be all, you know, like, organized and stuff. There we go. Put my three holes. Now, see, I've got the, um, I've got my half-inch lines, which, if this page is going next, it really doesn't need to be that far from this first one, so... I'm going to just kind of come in about the middle because this is my, these horizontal lines are my, where my holes go. So I'm just going to put it about right there, you know, in between those two. Just go. And same thing here. And same thing there. Just eyeballing it. Doesn't have to be exact. Now I've got my needle and my black wax linen. I'm going to start on the inside because I want my tail to end up on the inside. I don't want my tails on the outside this time. So I go down through the middle. Down through the middle. And let's just clamp that tail about right there. Just hold on to it. Okay, now I'm going to go up through one of the ends. It doesn't matter 
which one. I'm going to kind of open this out on the bottom and hope that I've got it lined up. So let's just go up this one. And into the hole that I already poked in my page. That's not it. I'm poking a new one. That's okay. Yeah, fine. Pull tight. Now, you skip the middle one, go down to the other end. Go in the hole you already poked. And there's my hole in the cover. Just like that. Pull in tight as you go. Now, you want to go back into the middle. Don't split your thread. Try not to get your needle in the middle of the thread that's already there. Get it right next to it. And go back in your original hole. Stop. Scratch your nose. Okay, now continue. Okay, everything's pulled tight, pretty good. Now you're in the middle. You want your two tails to kind of straddle your center thread like that, like so. And then you just tie, I have to turn it this way. You just tie a knot, any kind of knot will do. And cut off the excess. Just like that. Now we've got two pages in our book. See? Nice, huh? Okay. It's your nose again. Ooh. For the third one. This one, this one's pretty fat. It's going to need that half inch space, so I'm going to switch it with this one because this one's kind of skinny, or it's a little bit skinnier, and it can go ahead and go right there. So, okay. Now, there's my three. This next one, I'm going to need more. Red. I'm not measuring, I'm just pulling some off. You just want precisely some thread. That's exactly how much you need. Here, I'm going to come over the full half inch because this one's kind of kind of fat. And by sewing these in like this individually, this allows your cover to um, expand, or cover doesn't expand, but it allows you to use up all of your cover. You know, while it's still small like this, I can just, you know, wrap it closed like that. Then as it gets fatter, the wrapping gets shorter <laughs> until it's just a little bit wrapped or not wrapped at all. Totally up to you. But this is just my favorite way to do these kinds of things where, you know, you're adding to them and um, um, you don't, you maybe you're not quite sure how many signatures you're going to have in the end. So this is a good way to do that. Um, okay, I'll go ahead and finish these out and then when I'm done, we'll do a flip through and I will show you um, each of these awesome pages and who they're from. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I got it and I love it. <laughs> okay, I'll show you what I did. Um, I'll get to this part later. But I sewed in all of my little 
pages, my deconstructed art journal pages, using that same three hole pamphlet stitch. Really simple. When I got done with that, I there it was, you know, quite a bit taller, so I just tore off a strip off the top and a strip off the bottom to make it uh, fit the pages better. And then I took those two extra strips and just kind of glued them together to make a closure. And since, you know, this book is going to expand and grow and change, it's really kind of a temporary closure. It's kind of cheesy, but it'll work. I'll show you. Uh, before I did that, I went with one of those graphite pencil things, you know, water-soluble graphite stick, and just scribbled around the edge, added a little water, and blended it just to cover up some of the uh, torn edges. You know, you can use a Stabilo or a, one of those uh, gelatos, whatever. Just a little something around the edges to finish it off. And then I, I did the same thing with my torn strips. Glued them together, edged them with the graphite pencil. And then what I did, I had some scraps of some homemade washi tape that was made with some, I think it was just masking tape or artist tape. I put a little on here just to reinforce this back side so it wouldn't tear quite so easily. And I cut a little, two little slits right there so that to close the book, you do like this and then like this. Goes through there, like that. Fold this over. So see, as the book gets fatter, this can adjust, right? So fold that over, and this is one of those wooden paper clips. I've had this for years. I mean, years and years. I can't even begin to tell you where I got it because <laughs> I have no clue. But that's all it is. So there you go easy, effective, and room to grow. I've probably got enough room for at least one more swap because you get four in each swap and then sometimes I make a page. I've got a couple of my own in there. So at least one more swap, possibly two, but I don't know. That might be pushing it. So let me go through and show you my pages now. This I might attach to the back if I decide I want to use it long term, or I might not. I don't know. So, here's my pages. I have to get my notes out because I wrote down who was in which swap. Okay, this is a page that I made um, just because I was playing with my Twinkling H2Os and then melting those uh, Chinese wet wipes, you know. So I made this page with that, and this was just a flower I doodled on some watercolor paper and then painted some uh, H2Os on it, and more doodling with twinkling H2Os and some collage pieces of sheet music, and more just collage messiness on the back and a little watercolored flower. So that was just a page I made for myself, just because. Um, these next few pages are from the first swap I was in, which is the junk, um, junky, trash, you know, recycled material swap, swap group number 69. And these are the pages from that. This first one, which I love, it has all of these cool uh, tea bag packages on it and then the whole tea theme inside. Love this a lot. This is from my good buddy CJ Plum. She did this awesome page. And then this next one, I love that. Excellent, excellent use of findings <laughs> right there. Awesome. And look, a little pocket with a little card spreader and these clear ones are just they make me happy I really like those and then more tea-ness and, and 
Oh, look, she's got a little tuck spot right here with these some packaging and a tea thing. How cute is that? And that's not a, is that a something? Oh, that's right. That was her um, note that she put in there. That she it was also a recycled piece. No, I forgot about that. And then she's got packaging and look, bottle cap. Excellent, excellent use of all kinds of recycled goodies. This one is from Dana. I, I apologize if I get your last name wrong, but I'm going to try. Matsukawa. Dana Matsukawa. I hope I got it close. Um, but anyway, she's she sent this this awesome page right here. And this next one is from also my good buddy Maridel Abrams. And I love this so much because Mary, I mean, not look at the texture. Look how fat and awesome this is. Look at the little Monopoly man and his legs are ear pieces from eyeglasses. Brilliant! Just brilliant. And look, she made this little, it was like a little wrap closure. But, you know, since I bound it, then I just wrapped it around just the front page like this. So it makes like a little hangy deal. And she's got all of this Monopoly stuff. She's got all of this fantastic Minion stuff. Which, this is near and dear to my heart. Because, you know, I call my YouTube subscribers my Minions. I mean, I mean that in a very loving way. <laughs> and then look. She's got this, this perfect little tag here with her information on there. And look at these. These... She says they're sticky back chip bag washi. That is fabulous. And let's see what else she's got here. Her Hagen dazs packaging and a, a page with a recipe written on it. All kinds of goodies. And look at this can lid with some more of my little minions. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, next up is um, this page, which is from, if I can remember, oh yes, Veronique Allard, Veronique Allard, and look at this little thingy here, and I love her, she doodled a lot in here, which I think is fabulous, she's got, you know, her recycled pieces and then the doodling, and that, that really made me happy to see that, look at the texture she's got going on. So these, these were just some fantastic junky recycled pages. And this next one, okay, this is a page that I did. This, in fact, I did this on video, well, some of it, not all of it. Um, this is when I was trying to figure out the whole deconstructed art journaling by fives process. And I made these pages, and then I did a lot of uh, free play off camera. So it looks a little different. But I kept one for myself. And I've sent some others out in some happy mail. So um, this was my page. This is not the one I did for the swap. This next swap is the Deconstructed Art Journaling by Fives. But I did different pages for it. I made all new pages. So the first one, this one is from Alicia Drake. This was group number 91 in the um, um, Deconstructed Art Journaling swap group. And she, I love this background. The colors, just beautiful. And then look at the inside. It's just excellent um, JB5-ness <laughs> going on in there. <laughs> I really, really like that. <laughs> that. So beautiful page from Alicia. And then this one, is this from Janet? This is from Janet Heritage. And I have some other things, I think, from Janet. So I have a Happy Mail thing to show. She sent some, some extra goodies, so I'll show that another time. But she's got this, uh, look at these ladies. That just makes me laugh. They look like, were they off a greeting card, maybe? I'm not sure. But I love them, whatever they're from. I love them. And look, she's got a little bling going on here. And her favorite recipe, chips and salsa. 
I am right there with you. <laughs> right there with you on that. Love that. And this, this is one of my favorite. It's all fun and games until someone ends up in a cone. <laughs> There's the dog in the cone. <laughs> so yeah, this, this made me quite happy. Very cool page. And then this one is from Sharon, yes, Sharon Le, Le Winter. And this, this poor little page arrived, you know, middle of August, 110 outside. It was completely sealed shut. And I, I think maybe she had Mod Podged the surfaces and Mod Podge and heat just kind of don't get along or maybe they get along too well but it was it was sealed so badly I could not get it apart I had to use my heat gun and see this was from where it stuck to the envelope that she put it in so yeah I'm sure this was all nice and and neat but <laughs> had little spots where it stuck to the um, inside of the envelope and then this page I used my heat gun and was finally able to pry it apart but it, it probably looks a little worse for the wear. And, you know, this is probably not how Sharon intended for this to arrive, but I really love <laughs> this worn, distressed look. I mean, you can't, you can't distress like this on purpose. This is like perfectly natural distressing. So it actually makes me quite happy. I hope she's okay with it, because I certainly am. And this, this cracked me up. This was just, you know, like best JB5 page ever right here, that little smiley face. And and just the whole thing was great. I love the pictures, the images that she chose, and the colors, and everything about it. It was just fabulous. And there was one more person in this group, um, Michelle Haderer, Haderer? Um, but I never received from her, and I don't know what happened to Michelle. Um, I hope she's okay. I haven't heard from her. We have a little, you know, chat group. She hasn't posted in the chat group. So, um, I don't know what's up with that, but hopefully she's all right. And I do plan to, you know, add some more to this, at least one more swap, maybe two. Just depends on how fat the pages are. I guess that means I'm going to have to enter a swap. Hmm. Yeah. Every time I do, it's kind of funny because when the due date starts creeping up, you know, I instantly regret entering the swap, and, you know, I do the, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? I know better than to do this. I don't have time for the swap. It's just added stress, you know, that whole thing. Then I somehow managed to get it done, not always on time, but, you know, do the best I can. I do kind of try to stay in touch with my people and tell them just exactly how late I'm going to be. But, get it done and then afterwards when I have everybody's page then I'm all oh I'm so glad I joined the swap <laughs> yay me <laughs> so basically I'm just a little schizophrenic that way <laughs> but I'm gonna go um, troll around on the um, deconstructed art journaling Facebook page and see what other swaps are going on maybe enter another one with a you know, way far off due date. And um, I hope that you'll do the same. I'm going to put a link to the Facebook group down in the video description so you can go check them out. I've mentioned before that they're a great group. I really, um, really like what they do over there and how they do it. Extremely well organized. And I need that in a group situation. I like a, a well organized, well planned, thought out group environment. It just is makes a pleasant environment for everyone. So go check them out and if you get some pages, you've, you're in some swaps, you've done some, you have some pages like this that you need to bind, just use one of your, you know, sheets of painted paper, which if you're listening to me, you should have quite a stack of those already, right? You should be hoarding them because that's what we're supposed to do, I think. And just use one of those to make your cover. So, that's it. That's all I got for today. So, the end.